Welcome to the Book of Shoftim, Chapter 16, Perek Tedzayin, where we meet the peak drama of Shimshon, the most actionable stories. Wow, if you like thrillers, this is the chapter for you. Shimshon goes to the city of Gaza, Aza, a city that keeps finding itself in the headlines, and he goes to the city of Aza, and he uh, is meeting a woman there, and the Plishtim get word that Shimshon is in who is their arch enemy, is in the city of Gaza. They surround his house and they're like, we're going to get him in the morning. But he sneaks out of the house and in the middle of the night, he goes to the gates of the city. Remember, in those days, gates of the city are like 10, 20 feet tall. He picks up the gates of the city and he walks all the way to the mountain of Hebron all through uh, the night. And he has the city gates with him. Then Shimshon loves a woman in Nachal Sorek, the mountain, the, the, the valley or the, the uh, wa- uh, river of Sorek, and her name is Delilah. Have you ever heard of the name Delilah? Where this is, this is where it comes from. Delilah, Delilah. He finds this woman who is, her name is Delilah, and he falls in love with her. Well, bad news, because the officers of Plishtim come. And they come to Delilah, Delilah, and they're like, you know what? We need some information from you. We need you to uh, convince Shimshon to tell you his source of strength. Like, how is he so supernaturally uh, strong? And if you do that, we will give you a uh, a, a, a thousand men to protect you and one thousand pieces. I'm sorry, one hundred large pieces of silver and she's like yes i'm on it uh so she comes to shimshon and he's like how are you so strong tell me why it is that no one can ever handcuff you no one can ever tie you and shimshon is like he doesn't really trust her for good reason uh and he's like oh you know what you know what the reason i'm so so strong is he says well if you take seven uh ropes that have never been wet if you take seven ropes that were never ever in contact with water, then if you tie me, then I will uh, be like every person and uh, I will lose all my strength. So the officers of Plishtim, who she's spying for, give her these seven pieces of rope that were never ever wet. She ties him up and uh, she, the, the, someone, a Plishti is sitting in the room and she screams to him, Plishtim alecha Shimshon, there are Plishtim coming to you Shimshon. And sure enough, he takes the handcuffs, the seven ropes that have never been wet, and he rips them apart, no problem. Uh, so it turns out he kind of scammed her because that's really not the reason for his strength. So she's like, uh, okay, 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 that was obviously not the truth. What is the truth? So Delilah, Delilah says, come on, tell me the truth, please, 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 please. Now he should have known that if she asked him once and then she did that exactly that, she's kind of not trustworthy, but he did not realize this. So uh, he tells her, well, if you take ropes that have never ever been used for anything, new ropes, then I will be like any person. And she does the same thing. She tells the Plishtim, she puts those ropes that never were used for anything on his hands. And she screams while he's sleeping, Plishtim alecha shimshon, the Plishtim are surrounding you. He takes his, his hands and he rips the ropes apart. No problem. Obviously, he scammed her. That's not true. And so Delilah comes to him and she's like, oh, you've been lying to me. Tell me the truth. Now, he should have known better, but he doesn't. And he tells her another uh, excuse. Uh, he says, well, if you take my seven uh, streaks of hair, my his hair, I guess, was divided into seven kind of ponytails. And he says, if you take my seven uh, uh, pieces of hair, streams of hair, and you put them to the weaver, you know, those old uh, weaving machines, it's a huge, uh, 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 it's called a masechet. A huge thing of, of uh, wood that you weave with. He says, if you tie my hair in the item that you use to weave clothing, then I'm done. I've lost all my strength. Obviously, she does this while he's sleeping. She ties his seven ponytails into this weaving con- uh, 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 um, device, and she screams, "Plishtim alecha Shimshon! The Plishtim are coming for you, Shimshon!" And he wakes up, and he's just as strong. He can break all that weaving device with no problem. So she uh, starts crying to him. She says, you don't really love me. And she's like, oh, come on, why don't you tell me? And uh, you don't tell me. And eventually she nudges him so badly, it says he'd rather die than be nudged by her. So 
uh, then uh, he's like, you know what? I'm going to tell you the truth. He says, the truth is I've never gotten a haircut since I was born. I'm dedicated to God. I'm a Nazir. And if you shave my hair off, then I will lose all my strength. And it says that she realizes that he actually was saying the truth and that he poured his heart out. And she calls all of the people of Plishtim. They give her the silver, which she's paid for in order to uh, betray him. And she, uh, while Shimshon is sleeping, he, she takes a uh, knife or scissors and she cuts all of his hair. She screams, Plishtim Alecha Shimshon. He wakes up and he is weak. He lost his strength. Delila took all of his strength. He's gone. She cut his hair and he lost his source of strength. Horrible story about to happen. The Plishtim then take him, they tie him. They poke out his eyes and they bring him in a victory march. And they're like, yay, we got the ultimate enemy. We got the ultimate enemy of Plishtim. And they start arresting him with chains. They bring him to grind uh, in some dark jail in Gaza. He's, he's grinding the wheat. Basically, he's working very hard. And they announce a festivity. They're like, okay, we're going to go to the house of Dagon which is there of Odazara. They worshipped a statue of a fish called Dagon. And they say, yay, our god Dagon has given us our greatest enemy, Shimshon. And they all have this huge gala party where they're praising Dagon and saying, yay, God has given, uh, given, us, uh, god has given us our enemy. They invite him as entertainment. They bring him up like a dog. They make him look humiliated. He doesn't have his eyes. They say, oh, start laughing for us. They start uh, uh, using him for entertainment. And it's like, wow, it's such a humiliation. Shimshon whispers for the, to the young Plishti who's taking him around, right? Remember, Shimshon is uh, blind. So the guy who's taking him around is, is uh, accompanying him. He says, can you please help me lean on the two pillars that this whole house of Dagon is standing on? And the guy takes him there and there are... 3,000 Plishtim celebrating and partying and having a good time. Shimshon comes to the pillars. He's blind. He holds the two pillars that are holding up the entire building. And he says, Hashem alokim zochreni na vechazkeni na achapam azeh. Please, Hashem, give me strength just one more time. I just need one more uh, boost of strength. Uh, I'll, I'll take revenge from the Plishtim. And indeed, Hashem gives him that strength. He pushes the two pillars that the whole building is standing on. The whole building with all the Plishtim collapses. And it says that Shimshon has killed more Plishtim in his final moments than he has killed his entire life. He says famously, Tamot nafshi'im Plishtim, may I die together with Plishtim. And his family comes to get his body. They bury him between Sora and Eshtaol near his father Manoach. Shimshon was the leader of the Jewish people for 20 years. And that is the very, very sad end of the story of Shimshon. So what did we see in this chapter? We see first Shimshon going to Gaza, meeting a woman there, Plishtim surrounding the house. He takes the door and the pillars at the entrance to the city. Then he falls in love with a woman named Delila. Delila is bribed by the Plishtim. They tell her they'll give her a 100 pieces of silver and 100 men to protect her if she gets the secret to Shimshon's strength she begs him first he tells her he needs ropes that were never wet then ropes that were never used then to tie his hair with uh, a weaving device every time he bluffs her with something else finally she's like you don't love me tell me the truth he tells her the truth about his strength coming from the fact that he never got a haircut she cuts his hair while he's sleeping the police team come and the, they uh, take him, they poke out his eyes, they tie him in a prison. They make a big party in the house of Dagon there of Odazara. They laugh at him, they use him as entertainment. He tells the person to take him to where the two pillars, where the whole building is standing on, are. He knocks the building down with his hands. He says, Hashem, please let me take this last revenge. Give me a last bit of energy. And that is when he dies uh, together with all the Plishtim that are attending his party. Coming up next, chapter 17, the story of Micha. Not a happy story, but very, very dramatic.